All right, Ross. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, we're we're excited about a big challenge this week. Uh, I've never been to I've been to Pittsburgh for Justin Ross's surgery, but that's the only time I've been there. Uh, so excited about going to the stadium. Kind of cool to see the Steelers uh, on TV the other night. Uh, was that Sunday night or last night? I can't remember. Sunday night. Uh, had it on in the office there, but it was kind of cool to see, you know, the stadium that you're going to be playing in. Uh, uh, so. You know, looking forward to a, a, a great environment. You know, this is a really good football team. We're getting ready to play. Uh, I mean, they're playing with a ton of confidence. Uh, you know, this quarterback is special. He's he's a sixth-year player. The game is very slow to him, uh, very slow. Uh, he knows where everybody is. He 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 he's the game. We call it the game within the game. He's a master of the game within the game. Uh, really understands all the nuances of the offense. And again, six years uh, of being well coached it will do that when you're talented. And he's super talented, uh, very accurate. Uh, he's got one interception. He's the highest rated guy in the country. Um, and, uh, you know, just doing a great job. Got excellent receivers. I mean, really, this is the best group we've seen. Uh, three is three is a great, great football player. Uh, you know, he's, I guess, had, you know, Several 100 plus yard games. Their tight end is is uh, one of the top five guys production wise out there. Uh, very experienced offensive line, and a bunch of seniors and juniors in that offensive line. Uh, so a lot of experience there. This is the fastest tempo group that we've seen, and um, you know we got to do a great job, man. We got to do a great job of lining up and, and managing the game, especially at linebacker. Uh, they're going to challenge you, you know. Uh, you know they're a they put the ball in this kid's hands, and and you know he's he he knows what to do with it, uh, and uh, they do a good job mixing in the run as well. But that's the best uh, offense we've seen uh, for sure, and uh, the best player that I think we've seen. So uh, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, big challenges across the board from a defensive standpoint, and getting ready for these guys. He, you know, the quarterback is is known for uh, his precision in the passing game and the plays he's making, but. I don't think he gets enough credit for his scramble ability. Uh, he's when he scrambles, it usually leads to a big play. Uh, it, you know, gets does a great job of, of getting down and just you know moving the moving the chains, keeping them efficient, keeping them on schedule. Uh, and again, when he when he does scramble, it usually leads to a big play. Uh, you know, so very physical group, and uh, we got to match that physicality uh, for sure. Uh, so again, uh, top ten offense in three or four categories, uh, and uh, going to be a huge, huge challenge for us. But something we're excited about. And then defensively, uh, same thing. Uh, got a bunch of guys back. They 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 lost the two ends from last year, uh, but the two guys in there, they they played a lot, played a ton, ton of experience. Um, and really good players across the board. Five, eight, ten, and eighty-seven, and and eight is is one of the more disruptive players that we've seen on tape. Uh, he is a really, really good football player. You know, played a lot as a freshman last year, but he's a, he's a, he's a guy that really knows how to, how to play the game. And uh, it's impressive when you watch him on tape. You know, but the biggest thing with them is, is you know, they're an aggressive group. I mean, they're gonna force the issue. They don't give you any opportunity to, to uh, uh, figure things out, you know. They're not a, a group that's going to sit around and wait on anything to happen. They're going to they're going to challenge you, and they're and you know uh, they're a four three four press man type of team, and and uh, uh, we'll mix it up on some third down stuff. But uh, they're they're very aggressive and confident in what they do. Uh, very experienced in the secondary. Uh, you know, twenty one didn't play against us last year, uh, but he's a great player. Uh, he is a great player. Uh, 9, 31, and 14, you know, the same thing. Again, a lot of experience, a lot of confidence in what they do. Uh, they're very uh, physical and very aggressive at linebacker. Uh, do a great job in, in all areas. So uh, it's a complete team, kicking game. I think they've had, uh, and since, since uh, Pat's been there, I think they've had seven kick returns uh, for touchdowns. They've had some punt returns as well. So this is a, it's a really good group. Uh, just a complete football team, and and uh, you know the one game that they lost was uh, you know kind of a, a weird game, and uh, but I tell you since then they've they've really uh, and they you know they put some things together. Uh,
but you know, went to Tennessee and had a heck of a win there. Uh, got down early and roared back uh, and really uh, you know, did a great job on the road. So and then go on the road against VTech uh, in that environment as well. Again, I think that shows the poise of this quarterback and, and the experience of their team. So uh, big challenge, but again, we're excited about it, looking forward to it. Uh, biggest game of the year. And uh, if, if we're going to, you know, uh, you know, be the best version of ourselves this year that we can be right now, this is a, this is a, a game that we got to go play our best game in for sure um, because this will be the biggest challenge to this point. Yeah, last year, <clears throat> defensively, y'all did a pretty good job against Sid and Pickett. Just what, what was the key then and what do you have to try to do to, to slow them down? Well, we turned them over. You know, uh, we turned them over early. I thought that, uh, you know, they had some – now they had, I think, three linemen kind of playing in their first game. Uh, you know, we had some guys out last year against us. And, you know, that's a little different story this year. Um, but, you know, we affected them. And uh, I think you just you, – you, he's a rhythm thrower, man. You can't let this guy – you can't let this guy sit there and get comfortable. I mean, he's, he's just too good. He's too good. He knows where everybody's going. He sees everything. He's seen every coverage. Uh, he's like Skowski playing linebacker, right? I mean, he just, he just, you just don't fool that guy. Um, so he's very confident, and he's got really good players around him that, that have a lot of experience too. But, but we turned him over was the biggest thing early, and I think that uh, you know, and then we, and then we, we made a bunch of plays. Uh, we capitalized on the turnovers, and then we, we got them behind because we had we hit some huge plays, uh, huge plays, uh, in this game, uh, but. The turnovers were, were, were critical. Uh, you know, we sacked him. We were able to win some, uh, get some pressure on him and, uh, and, and get him on the ground uh, and just get him a little you know, out of rhythm. Uh, but, but I think you know, right out of the gate, I think it was Malcolm Green, right out of the gate with a, with a big, big pick on him. Uh, so you just gotta, you gotta get them you know, behind the chains and don't let them be efficient. Um, and you gotta win the matchup up front. And I thought we did a good job of that last year. But, the story of the game was turnovers. We were plus four in the margin against them, number one. And then number two, uh, we played really, really well offensively. Really, really well. From, from your perspective, Dabba, what is the biggest difference in this version of, of Pickett that has been playing at the level he's playing at? Yeah, well, again, I think that offensive line is, is a very experienced group. And, and, and he's playing with a lot of confidence behind them. You know, they're doing a good job uh, and just you know, he, he's just he's just a really freed up player. You know, he, he's he's a six year guy. He, he's very confident. He's incredibly well coached, um, and he's just he's you know again as I always say, there's no greater teacher than experience. He's got all this experience to draw upon, and he's applying all the lessons that he's learned throughout his career. You just see that. I mean, uh, and when you when you're in a system as long as he is, you understand all the nuances. You know, and that's kind of where, you know, that's kind of where we are right now. We got some guys that we, we need to be in calculus, and we're still doing some arithmetic over here. And uh, and, and we got some that are in, can do calculus, but it's, it's, it's just not all on the same page. Um, and, uh, you know, they've got a very experienced group. You know, these receivers, very good players. Um, and uh, but this OL has played a lot of football as well. Again, they're all juniors and seniors. And I think that's the number one thing, is just the confidence that he has up front and then just his knowledge, just his knowledge. The game is, the game is very slow to him, and uh, as it should be for a really talented you know, six-year. This guy's an NFL player. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And a uh, very accurate thrower. Um, and um, so that's the biggest thing I see in him. Uh, very confident, very confident. Not that he wasn't confident last year. I just think that he's – He's just got uh, they're a little bit more of a complete group than the team we saw last year. Dabo, I think Tony said yesterday he thinks the players on offense on his side are pressing a little bit. Yep. I mean, have you seen that yourself? And how do you yeah. kind of get them to stop? I, don't, I mean, I don't think there's any question about that. I mean, <laughs> I mean I, you know, how else do you explain uh, some of the things that – that you see, you know, from some of our best players. And I just think, you know, it's, it's just kind of human nature. And uh, especially in today's world, you know, when I was coming up, somebody just, you know, maybe wrote a bad article in the local newspaper and, you know, that was about it. Uh, and you, you hoped your grandmother didn't read it or something. Uh, 
you know, still had the people at the barbershop, but now all the people at the barbershop have a national forum, you know, and all the media uh, sees it. So, you know, it, it, that's all they get right now is how bad they are and, you know, how much their coaches stink and, you know, and, and how terrible, you know, this. I mean, that's all they get. And so, but that just comes with it. And as a, but as a young person, you got to learn how to, you got to learn how to block that stuff out, you know, the noise. And, you know, because if you don't, you get burdened down and you try to do too much and you get outside of things and then you're not playing free. And next thing you know, it's, it's you know, just the weight of the world's on you. And uh, so, yeah, I don't think there's any question that, that this group offensively is, is uh, uh, you know, burdened, uh, you know, by disappointment, uh, you know, uh, expectations, uh, outside noise. And as a coach, you fight that. That's what you. That's what you know. That's what you have to fight all the time. And and and. Uh, but you know, this is a. It's a very loud, loud, loud world we live in. And if you don't uh, put your armor on every day and stay inside out, it can. It can. You know, as I always say, ships don't sink because of the water around them. Right? They sink because the water gets in them. And you let all that garbage. You start. You know, who you gonna listen to? What you gonna believe? You know, uh, that's your choice every single day. You, you got to, and, and if you, if you, you know, you, if you let that stuff in, it will, it will affect you. And uh, that's why I'm really proud of what I've seen out of DJ. Because I think early on he was really, I mean, he struggled the first few games. But these past two games, he's really, he's really, he's, he's made a big turn. You know, he's, his best game was his past one. And, you know, we just got to be better around him. And, uh, but just something that we're fighting through right now. And uh, the good news is, is we're still Clemson. And we still got a great group of guys. And, and uh, you know, we got to help them fight through that. You know, because they're not, not very confident right now. Is there anything y'all can do as coaches to help them execute more freely? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot we can do. That's what we're working on every day. The first thing is quit reading what y'all write. Quit listening to the radio. Quit listening to the to the Twitter. Get off of that mess, you know. And stay away from that stuff, you know, because that stuff. It, if it's it's the same thing. If it's great, you know, it, it either one is terrible for you. Um, but you know, again, you you at the end of the day, I mean, this is a, a football team that's competed their butts off, and all we focus on is the bad. Our defense has played great. Championship football. Uh, our special teams have been outstanding. And uh, it's been a long time since we – I mean, our special teams are playing at a high level for us and doing some great things. So there's a lot of good, but offensively right now – and, again, you know, there, there's no – we don't have excuses. Nobody cares. Nobody wants any excuses at Clemson, and there aren't any. Um, you know, we've got all we need. You know, and everybody focuses on what we don't have. I focus on what we do have. I mean, yeah, we're, we, we're – it's hard to have some continuity. We've got to get some continuity up front. Again, we started eight different guys and three different centers, and – that's frustrating, but we can make it work. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's kind of a musical chairs in some spots, and so, you know, that can affect you a little bit. Uh, but, you know, we've got, a, we've got what we got, uh, and we got all we need. We got all we need. Uh, we just got to go and uh, make a few of the plays that are there. And, again, the plays are there. It's not like, you know, uh, plays aren't there. We just got to – execute some of the things that we're not doing a good job of and and continue to believe uh, in the right things. And that's a, that's a choice everybody's got to make. you know if Frank Gladson will be back this week and then do you have a timetable? I, I don't. Oh, did you say EJ? Uh, EJ, uh, I'm not sure on Frank. You know, I'd say he's day-to-day. Uh, and uh, EJ looks good. Uh, he responded well to the, to the scope. And, again, we, we didn't even know that was going to happen. Uh, and then finally just – made a decision, uh, I guess it was, uh, I don't know if it was Wednesday or maybe it was Tuesday afternoon. I can't remember when we did it. We just said, you know what, we just have to scope him because he just wasn't, he wasn't getting any better. So um, the good news is there was no ligament damage or anything like that. It just a, it was a good cleanup, so he's responding well. They think he's on a fast track, but I don't know. I don't know if it's a week or two weeks or, or what. And that was his ankle? That was his knee. Tony, you haven't indicated 
that, that will should move you back in practice this week. And I know you're optimistic in him coming back, but do you hope by Thursday to have a pretty good idea about this week for him? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> we better. <laughs> we better. Is that reasonable, in other words, that maybe for this week? Be- I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, he's he's he got back last night moving around, you know, uh, as far as not being in yellow. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see where he is. I don't know. We got to go. We, you know, we got full pads today and shells tomorrow. But definitely by Thursday, we'll have a little bit more of an idea of, of what he can do. But uh, too early to, to say on that right now. And then also on the center situation, I know the depth chart yeah. lists what it lists. But yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm proud of Trotter. Uh, and again, I know everybody just thinks about the snap for 20 yards, uh, you know, which is that's a problem. Uh, but man, that kid played well. He's not played all year. He literally just got a club off his hand, and and he finds out at breakfast, you know, eating his uh, grits. You know, Trotter, you're starting today, big guy. Uh, you know, he's been practicing, and he really played well. Uh, so again, you know. Three different centers in, in six games. And, and, and last year, we didn't have hardly any depth in the OL. Our depth was very young, we were freshman type guys. And, and, uh, but we had great continuity. You know, all five of those guys started every game. Now, which was a, a little bit of a double edged sword because I thought they played too many snaps and we wore down a little bit uh, as the season went. This year, we come in with a whole lot more depth, but we can't get any continuity uh, because of you know, injuries and, 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 and so forth. You know, we, that, I think last week there were 14 scholarship guys out and we got four linemen out um, and guys that would really uh, have helped us. But, um, and then you got, you know, COVID, you got all these things. And so it's been kind of a musical chairs and that's not a position that you want to have a lot of musical chairs. Uh, that's a position where you need some continuity. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's like the first third and one it was a total miscommunication. We had half the side, half the two guys were running. Uh, we had one player get the wrong call for some reason, and he affected another player. So we had three guys running one play and two guys running another play. And it's just, you know, again, that's continuity. That's playing together. You know, it's, it's all those type of things. And that's what we're working through here. And so hopefully the second half of this season, I mean, we got six games left to go, man. We got a lot of football left. And, uh, you know, as I always say, man, nothing less important than score at halftime. I mean, we got a lot of, a lot of ball left, and, and hopefully we can, you know, the BC game, we, we really got excited because we really saw that continuity for the real first time this year and really settled in, and, and uh, communication was great, really played well. The good news is we're running the football well. That's the positive. If you want a positive, like we're running the football, the first couple of games people said, run it. Well, we couldn't. We weren't. We weren't really run. We weren't running the ball well. Now we're running the ball well, and we're creating a lot of opportunities in the passing game. We're not finishing plays. You know, we're making the miraculous plays, and then we're not making the layups uh, consistently. So, you know, that's kind of the next step. But I'm really pleased with what we're doing in the running game. I mean, we're running. I think we're averaging 4.3 yards a carry, which is exactly what our national championship team averaged in 2016. 4.3 yards a carry. Um, and, and our 2011, 12, 13, 14 team were averaging more than all those teams in, in yards per carry. And those teams all won 10 plus games, finished top 15 in the country. Uh, so we're doing some good things. We've made some improvement, um, but we just haven't been able to put it all together. And, uh, but at some point we will, we will, uh, and we'll build on it. And, uh, but you know, it's, we got what we got and we gotta, we gotta make it work. And again, we got all we need. We got all we need to be a, a great football team. Is, is Whipple, what's your take on him as a, as a schemer and does he do more formationally than, than, than a lot of the teams you? I, I mean, does a great job. I mean, he just, you know, it's, it's uh, uh, they do a good job of, of creating some matchups, you know. Uh, they know who their best players are and they're going to do everything they can to create some matchups for those guys and some one on one opportunities. And, um, you know, they're, they're a pass first offense, but they're going to keep you on. They, they want to be physical and they're going to keep you, they're going to keep you honest on the run game for sure. Um, but you know, he, he knows who his best players are and like any coach, you're going to feature that. And that's, that's exactly what they're doing. They're not, they're going to put the ball in that number, that, that number eight's hands. You know, that's, that's who's getting it.
and uh, and he's he's schooled up and he's well equipped. You know that's where he does his best coaching. He's well equipped on how to manage the game because uh, the coach is on the sidelines. You know, and he 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 really knows how to manage the game. He knows how to get them in the right plays. He's equipped with some. You know, some, some check with me's and some packages and things like that. Uh, but again, they'll do a good job, uh, whether it be in their empty package or, or uh, formationally uh, in creating some matchups, you know, that they want. Can you share anything about Joseph Charleston's decision to transfer? Yeah, I just, uh, you know, came to me last week and said that, you know, he, he just feels like he wants to, you know, get a fresh start somewhere. And, you know, again, uh, it's always disappointing, but I'm just kind of numb to it, uh, you know, now. I mean, that's just 2021. I mean, that's probably going to be uh, news every week. Eventually, it's going y'all going to quit reporting it. Uh, it's just going to be like the, you know, the, like, oh, and by the way, because uh, that's the world we, we've, we've created. It's the world we're living in now. But, you know, I love Joseph. I mean, I, I think he's a, he's a, He's a really good player, like a really good player. He's had some a lot of un, unfortunate, um, you know, issues and situations. And he's been he's had injuries. He's missed he missed a lot of camp this fall. He's he's battled a hamstring and he's had a lot of things. And then you know, other guys have taken advantage of opportunities. And you know, he just he just felt like that. Uh, you know, again, you you know, you'd like to see him finish and see what happens. But again, that's a uh, everybody's got to make their own decisions, and and that's the world we're in today. So he wants to take this time and and figure out what he wants to do because he wants to go somewhere in January. Uh, he's a great kid, uh, love his mom and dad. I mean, just just super super people, and uh, you know, uh, you know, thankful. You know, had a couple years with him, and hopefully we helped him. Uh, but uh, just have to wish him well. One year waiver even made the ball roll faster down. One year waiver. Uh, being able to play. I don't think that's a one year waiver. I think that's for the rest of life. Uh, that's a, that's for you know forever. Um, right away. Yeah, that's a that's a. You're, you mean like waiver of the ineligible set out? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought you meant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you yeah. think that's even sped up? I, 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 t I thought you said like a one year waiver for us legislatively, yeah. you know, but yeah. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt. No question about that. I mean, you know, that's, that's the world we've created and the world we've lived in, and it's going to be, that'd be, every school is going to deal with that. Every single school out there uh, will deal with it a lot. And in some some cases, it's 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 you know it's a it, there's a there's a I think there's a right time for that stuff you know uh, but I think that uh, you know it's it's uh, not always the best thing you know and we we but we again that's what's been created and we gotta we gotta make it work. Uh, you talked on Sunday about a Joe's missed block on that Davis Allen uh, screen. Uh -oh. You talked a lot in fall camp about how he was the most, one of the most improved guys. I mean, is, is the details in terms of like a situation like that, blocking, things like that, what's held him back? It's not you? much of a detail. You block the guy in front of you. That's very simple. Uh, not much of a detail in that. You know, just do your job. And he did some good things, but, you know, it just, like, you, can't, you just can't even explain that. Can't even explain it. Uh, so, you know, uh, just – Every single play, you have a job to do. There is no off play. And again, he's a he's he's not a complete player. He's gonna be. He's gonna be. He's gonna be a great one. Uh, but it's just, you know, there are no off plays. And uh, you got a job to do every single play. You're either blocking somebody, getting your hands on somebody, running a route, full speed. It's no in between. And you know, just frustrating. Uh, uh, you know, situation there, but again, that's just one play. We got we got twenty five plays just like that. That's our biggest problem offensively is getting eleven guys uh, consistently doing their job. 
And uh, so ultimately, you know, player performance is all on coaches. So it, it's all on me. There's no at all. It's just that's just the way it is. I'm responsible for for what you see. And uh, so uh, nobody more frustrated than myself. With some of the drops and with the with the blocking stuff that you mentioned, have you spent any more extra time with the receivers this week? Kind of being more I spend I spend time with everybody, defensively, offensively. I spend time with everybody on this on this roster. Uh, but you know, uh, it's not just the receivers. It's 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 that it's it's all it's everywhere. It's just a it's a funk. Uh, it's 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 just a, a stink. And we got to get rid of it, you know, lingering in the car. And <laughs> we got to get rid of it. It's like Seinfeld. Y'all remember that Seinfeld show where the stink was in the car and you couldn't get rid of it? I don't remember which one. It just pops in my head right here. <laughs> That's what we got. Oh, my Lord, man. But we're going to get there. We're going to get there. The good news is we're still Clemson. And the good news is we got a bunch of great kids. And we got a bunch of great people. And, again, we just kind of – we're in a little bit of a uh, funk, but we gotta we gotta play our way out of it, and we will, we will, and we'll we'll look back on this, and it'll be a great conversation somewhere down the road, a few years from now, we'll be we'll be saying, God, y'all remember how bad we stunk those first six games, you know? Yeah, we'll get it we'll get it going, we'll get it going. We got a lot of challenges, but everybody has challenges. Everybody has things that they got to deal with, and um, you know, it's frustrating because it's not something that we've we're used to around here. I mean, it's just not. Um, you know, and so, but we'll uh, we'll get it turned around. Tony said that yesterday that this offense doesn't have the leadership of some of its predecessors. Who are some of the guys you're looking to to sort of elevate that presence? Of, of the everybody on the field is a leader to me. I ain't looking to any everybody. If you're on that field, you're a leader, and uh, you know we need everybody to just take ownership of what they can do to you know help us get better. And, uh, you know, you'd be a leader by being detailed. You'd be a leader by knowing and doing your job full speed. Uh, you'd do a do a, be a leader by making the plays that are, that are there. Uh, so everybody's a leader. It's not on any one person. It's on all of us. At the time, Brent and Tyler couldn't celebrate the interception, but would you, after the fact, as a dad especially, kind of appreciate that a father-son moment Necessarily take place. Yeah. Oh, that was great, man. It was a huge play. It was a huge play, and Tyler's really had a good year for us. I mean, he's a he's a smart kid. We can do a lot with him. He's he's kind of our he's kind of our putty guy. We can he, he can he can play a lot of different positions, um, and there's a whole lot more. He's just a redshirt freshman. You know, we didn't we didn't count last year. So this kid's got a lot. He's got a lot in front of him. He can run. He's physical. Uh, sometimes a little too physical, uh, you know, had, had a big penalty there, third and 12. But you love his tenacity, and uh, he's got excellent ball skills. You know, he played quarterback in high school, uh, so he knows the game and, and just, you know, understands things on the back end kind of like a quarterback. And uh, proud of him. That was a, that was a huge, huge – it was one of the things we talked about in the game was red zone defense, and that was a huge, huge uh, play in that game. And then we went on and, and went and scored. You know, we got points off of that. So uh, two weeks in a row, we've gotten points off of turnovers, and that'll be a key in this game. You know, uh, continuing. That's another positive. We've won the margin two weeks in a row, and you know that's that's if we can continue to, you know, win the margin, continue to play well on special teams, continue to play well on defense. Uh, we'll 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 get it put all together, and and, uh, and we'll like the result when it happens. Chance to talk to Brent about that, that kind of proud moment, though. Just uh, no, not really. Just I mean, we celebrated on the sideline and and talked about it when we watched the tape and you know all that. But that's that's about it. I'm gonna tell him to call you and and you be the middleman. Okay, I'm telling him to call PhilCornBlue.com. We'll go from there. How about that? Mm. I'm a big time coach. Wow. I made a big time list. Wow. I'm gonna tell him to call you. I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let you either 
You going to negotiate that? Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm, I, this is the only Death Valley I'm concerned about right here. That's for sure. All right. Anything from Zoom? Hey, Dabo, this is Gene Tucker from Charleston. Uh, as you mentioned, you know, the first trip to Pitt, they joined the ACC way back in 2013. Would you like to see a little more variety in the ACC schedule rotation? Way back in 2013. Uh, man. Uh, making me feel old, uh, Gene. Uh, did you say the, the rotation? Yeah, I, you know, I, I've said that many years. I think one of the – you'd have to kind of figure out a different way on the um, – um, what do you call it? The, uh, the crossover um, rival, I guess. I guess for us that's Georgia Tech. Uh, you'd have to kind of do away with that. And, um, you know, so there might have to be a little bit because I know that could affect – some teams, uh, but I personally would like to see that and just kind of see a little more of a, uh, uh, you know, rotation. But, you know, it's, it gets hard, though, in these conferences. They're getting big. And, and you know what, in, in a few years, we're, we're having, I think, a different conversation. Uh, so I'm not sure it's really going to matter. Call philcornblute.com. <laughs> um, I did want to ask you, though, to kind of follow up on that a little bit. What do you make when a coach wins a national championship and less than two years later he's out? Um, does that, is there problems in, in, in terms of our expectations and the way that this works? If, if, if you can win a national championship and can't even last two more years before people want to make a change? Uh, I mean, <laughs> it, it, there's not – Anything that surprises me, I mean, there's not, you know, um, there's not much patience anymore, you, you know. I mean, that's just – and, again, you know, I mean, you, there's mitigating factors to everything. I don't know. There's always extenuating circumstances and, and things like that. I don't, I don't know other people's business. I have no idea, you know, why people make decisions that they make. But I do know this. Uh, some of the greatest coaches that we've ever had, you know, ever uh, weren't very good, you know, early or – or maybe the consistency weren't, wasn't there. Uh, and, I mean, you can do your own study on that, but I think that's pretty well documented. Uh, so, you know, I, I, it's, a, it's a tough business, that's for sure. Uh, you know, and that's why, you know, the, I'm, I'm proud of the national championships and, and, you know, hey, we've been to six playoffs in a row, and, you know, that's never been done by anybody. It's hard to do. It's hard to win. Uh, you know, hopefully everybody's – maybe the Clemson people have a little more appreciation for that this year. It's hard to win. Uh, that's one thing. That's another positive with our group. We've had four one-possession games in a row, and our kids just battle their butts off um, and find a way. But it's very, very hard to win. But the biggest thing for me, you know, national championships are great, but it's just the consistency that we've had for, you know, a decade. I mean, we've been incredibly consistent on and off the field. Um, and that's, that's the thing that I think everybody wants. But that's really hard to achieve. And, uh, you know, we, we've had some challenges within those times, but we've just been a very consistent program. And that's what I've always focused on. It's not, not a team, not just that team, but really always being, you know, uh, program focused. And, you um, you know, that has served us well and will continue to serve us well. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it's just the, that's the world we live in. So uh, it comes with the territory, and I think everybody knows that um, And when you, when you get into coaching. <clears throat> He's done well. He's gotten better and better. I mean, he's. I think that's. It's certainly helped us, and it's helped him. Uh, you know, I think he's done a nice job. Um, he really has made some big plays for us, and and uh, you know, just going to continue to get better. Uh, it's still, you know, a part of his game that I think he's improving in. But uh, and again, continuity up front and all those things has a little bit to do with that too. But uh, I've been proud of him. He's 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 done some good stuff, man. Uh, from where he was when he started this year to where he is right now, he has worked his tail off, and he's in a good place. You know, he's 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 in a he's in a good place, and uh, 
again, we just got to be a little better around him in, in some areas and, and you know, get the continuity and the rhythm that we need. And I think uh, he'll be fine. I mean, that, you know, the play that we – the play action that we dropped across the middle wide open, uh, man, you watch him in the pocket right there and, and, and just was really, really impressive what he did. And, you know, that's going to be a 50, 60, you know, yard-plus play. And, and uh, you know, we don't make the play. And, and so uh, – but evaluating him – uh, you know, everybody focuses on not making a play, but evaluating him and, and how he's how he's grown uh, with his pocket presence, uh, his accuracy, um, and his and his uh, uh, run game stuff. I mean, he's he's done a really he's he's done some good things. He's like I said, he's he's heading in the right direction. He graded really well and um, played his best game again and, and found a way to win. So. Uh, it'll be a lot of good days from 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 uh, uh, DJ as he continues forward. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, appreciate it.